Last month, I saw a photo that shocked me. Can you unenhance? Yeah, more, less. That's good. Okay, now who's that? No, not Ryan Gosling. Who's that? Oh, it's a water tower? Pretty cool. I sure wish I knew more about that. But don't go to that Variety article looking for answers. They don't have the guts to explain how water towers work. Instead, it was a story about Ryan Gosling as a kid wanting to climb something and then getting to go on top of it as an adult. It's a good story if you care about children's dreams being fulfilled, but it's a pretty lame story if you want to understand how water towers work. This is a sore topic for me because five years ago, I asked my dad why every town had a water tower and he looked at me like I had H2 no brains. He told me the reason that there's water flowing out of my sink, my tub, my toilet, ideally not flowing out of my toilet, is because of these water towers. But if water towers are so important, why would they be disguised as ketchup bottles? Or ripe peaches? Or ripe plums? Possibly because being good at your job and being an absolute stunner are not mutually exclusive. But to really talk about water towers, it would really help to leave this room. I'm not sure it's possible, but it's worth a shot. Wow, it worked. Now we're in Volunteer Park in Seattle, Washington, and we're next to a weird big building. Is it the home of Rapunzel? No. Is it a water tower? No. Oh, yeah, it is. And the look of this park has changed a lot since this photo from 1925, and I think it's a good thing. The trees grew. Uh-oh, I have to use the toilet. Let me try something. I just uh, had to use this toilet to explain something. The way toilets work has a bit in common with water towers. At the top of most toilets is a tank of fresh water. In the past, it was even higher up. And that tank is ready at any time in case you want to flush. You push the toilet lever. Which pulls up the flapper in here which lets the fresh tank water down to flush down whatever you want to flush down. Now a toilet's water tank usually only has enough for a couple of flushes. And if you keep trying to flush the toilet really quickly, you'll notice it can't flush because there's no water left in the tank and you didn't give it time to refill. Well, a water tower is also a tank that's holding water in a place that's higher than the place it needs to go. Anytime there's a need for more water, the valve will open up and send more water. Instead of refilling every time any water is used, like a toilet, there's enough water in a water tower for everyone's daily use. And then every night, water will be pumped up to the water tower to refill it. There's also a lot that has to do with pressure, but I'm feeling pressure to not be in this bathroom anymore, so. This water tower was built in 1906 with an observation tower on top. And this was a trend happening across the United States to try and stabilize the water supply in a way that wasn't ugly. Now I'm gonna start on the climb, but while I gasp my way up those stairs, I heard there's a person on the bed who really wants to talk about why water towers are so high up. Wow, look at her go. Not only is other me climbing up 107 steps, even before I started climbing, other me is already at one of the highest points in Seattle. Well, at least in the top five. And if you've noticed, most water towers are at a high point in the town or city. And that's because water towers are not just about water storage. Its primary function is to pressurize water. By using gravity to get water down, you can have consistent water pressure without relying on electricity or pumps to get the water where it's going. And to get water up there, you can use power to pump it at a time when it's most efficient. Now, early water towers in the US were constructed of wood and even early pipes were made of wood too. The first water system in Philadelphia in 1801 used steam pump and bored logs. But it was certainly not boring because those pipes were bursting and the entire water system was not seen as a success because it was both expensive and unreliable. So as technology advanced in the mid 1800s, so did interest in how to provide clean, safe water to a rapidly growing population. At the same time, there were big changes happening to the steam engine that allowed for better pumps, which could pump water with more control and efficiency, along with new capabilities and flexibility with steel. So water could go against gravity, all to then be delivered to the people. And you can technically just send water up just for it to come down and be pressurized. But an added benefit of water towers is they can also store water. The tank I'm climbing next to can hold 883,000 gallons of water. 
And the benefit of this water storage is the system can better handle peaks in water usage happening in the mornings and evenings. And if electricity is scarce or inconsistent or there's another emergency, the water supply can hopefully last until you fix the problem. Okay, it looks like I'm almost there. Let's wait a minute. Let, let her catch her breath. You good? This has one of the best views in Seattle when it's not being Seattle. You can see all of downtown Seattle, behind the Olympics, and then on the other side you can see the Cascades. But if you're absolutely bored by nice looking mountains and views, you can also see a water tower. In the center of this water tower is the actual water tower made of steel. The building and the stairs and the cute exterior are all just the fancy outfit it's wearing, but like a fancy outfit you can never change out of. And this isn't the only water tower enshrined in a cute fit. There were a lot of conversations about how to make water towers not ugly at the tail end of the 1800s, which explains why a competition occurred in 1893 from the engineering record to submit the engineering records prize designs for water towers, pumps, and power stations, which show a lot of water towers that are giving Princess of Genovia. And the initial competition stated that the projectors of such enterprises, the contestants submitting, should not erect structures placed on hilltops to be an offense to the eyes of this and future generations. And that's us, we're future generations. But there was clearly a desire to create things that looked good and were useful beyond water capabilities, which explains why many of the drawings included observation landings, similar to the one that we're in right now. And in this case, this water tower was built in a public park that was intended to be an enjoyable place to spend time. Which brings us to the big body of water right next to this tower. Should I tell you about the reservoir? Uh, does it relate to water towers? I mean, they're both filled with water and it works pretty similar to a water tower. It sounds like a tangent. Yeah, it is. Is it still in use? No, but it's maintained in case there's an earthquake or a fire that requires non-drinkable water. Cool, I hope that doesn't happen. I think I'm gonna take it from here for a bit. Maybe you can chill out, read the signs. But what about the water towers that look more aquamarine, less aqueduct? Towers that look like the one Kendra's unknowingly entrapped in, those are the exception, not the rule for water towers. Because not every water tower cares about the fancy outfits. Lots of them are out there with absolutely nothing on but a name tag. The number of water towers was expanding as the number of waterworks was growing exponentially in the United States. Although initially many were privately managed, by 1924 there was a major shift with over 70% of waterworks being publicly run. And by the 1900s, steel tank construction, along with supports, was what it was all about. So earlier wood tanks were replaced. If only there was a state that tracked their water tower journey from 1894 to 1967 and wrote 100 pages on it. Oh, thank you, South Dakota. And to the other 49 states, you better start tip-tapping on that keyboard. I want to see your water tower reports. I'll wait. Metaphorically, I'm going to move on. South Dakota is an interesting example because it's a pretty spread out state. Their initial need for water towers had less to do with clean water and more a need for fire protection. The early water systems that started in South Dakota were almost always directly after a fire. Deadwood got one after an 1879 fire destroyed 300 buildings and left 2,000 people homeless. Del Rapids had fire after fire, and after one destroyed a local newspaper, its editor made it his mission to mount public pressure on the town council to get a water system and water tower in place. And he succeeded. Look at this smoke show that stopped smoke. And although these water systems were initially to prevent fires, they provided drinking water too. And over time, the goal of providing clean water came to the forefront, meaning that water needed to be inspected and approved to help reduce the spread of disease. Cool. Now, during the depression, the building of water systems and towers stagnated. And that was the case in South Dakota until public works projects from the New Deal, which led to a boom of water towers being built from 1933 to 1941 across the country. Now, the New Deal was funding projects through the WPA and the PWA, the Works Progress Administration and the Public Works Administration. There were exceptions, but generally if your project cost less than $25,000, it would be a WPA project, and if it was more than $25,000, it would be a Public Works Administration project. The PWA hired contractors, not necessarily just people who were on relief. And water towers were a price where it could kind of go either way. 
which means there were suddenly lots of water towers popping up as part of these New Deal projects. And if I were ranking them, this one in Rankin, Texas would be pretty high. But America's big, including this water tower in America's Georgia. And it's like paradise to have so many New Deal water towers to choose from. But looking through all these water towers, it's like a Where's Waldo, Arkansas. But really, beyond all of that, the thing that actually matters is, can it hold water? Luckily, we do know that this one in Missouri can. It should give you new hope that so many water towers were being built during the New Deal. Not this one in New Hope, Minnesota, though. Uh, that was built in 1959, totally unrelated. As you can tell, the initial New Deal water towers weren't necessarily about looks, unless you've got a thing for the Iron Giant. The sole focus was to give clean water access to rural locations. But water towers were also a place for creative expression, especially if that creative expression was advertising the product you're selling. I'm not doing any more wordplay because it's corny. No, this is all catching up to me. But usually these water towers were connected with a local business. From a Rochester, Minnesota canned corn company from 1931, Brooks Ketchup for a ketchup company in Illinois, a Dixie Cup in Lexington, Kentucky, or the world's largest eight ball from a former billiards factory. In general, it seems like many kitschy water towers were built around factories that were just trying to take advantage of the water tower that they already had to have built and get some free advertising out of it. My mom remembers a cereal water tower in her hometown, but there's no record of it that I can find because not many of these water towers survived as companies changed hands and closed factories. And the commercial examples that are still standing are usually because the community rallied together and kept it standing. And a lot of them don't even hold water anymore. And then you have water towers that are semi-built out of spite, like this Peachoid, which was a water tower with a purpose of supplying water and also telling Georgia to stop acting like they're the peach growing capital. South Carolina is growing three times the number of peaches as Georgia, but getting none of the press. So they built a water tower to get the word out. So if we could get an edit to that Justin Bieber song, that would be great. I got my peaches out in South Carolina. Oh yeah, she Actually, South Carolina is still in second place. California produces five times as many peaches as South Carolina and Georgia combined. Okay, so can I get another edit? I got my peaches out in from California. Oh yeah, shit. I get my weed from California. That's that shit. It's a little repetitious, but it's okay. Now I've been focused on some pretty rural places, but water towers are even more common in dense cities. And you get a great view of that if you've ever been Spider-Man, or I guess played as him in a game. New York City can provide enough water pressure to get water up to six stories, but for any building above six stories, they need to provide water to those upper floors. If only we knew some way to get water down. Oh my God, yes, gravity from earlier. So water towers in New York have been working for over a hundred years. It works the same as the larger water tower systems, just on a smaller scale. At night, the building will fill up the water tank with a pump and then people can use it. And when you look around New York, you see water towers that look really old, but these water towers last between 30 and 35 years. And the reason they look so worn is because the wood is untreated. The wood also insulates the water to avoid freezing. That's one of the reasons they explain why they still use wood, but it's a never ending business in New York city, building up and bringing down these water towers to get water to these upper floors. And that's been my takeaway on water towers in general. It's something you might never think about, but it's always being worked on. And you'll notice the moment it changes. We've already seen that cost cutting decisions or outdated infrastructure can jeopardize the health of entire communities, which is why it is important to know when changes might be happening in your water system. But when it comes to water towers and their beauty standards, it really is what's on the inside that counts, especially when the inside is filled with clean, drinkable water. So whether you see a brick water tower with an observation deck, a steel elliptical bottom, or the modern spheroid with a single leg, you're seeing a building that gets water to people miles away and makes their sinks and their toilets and their showers work. And that's really cool. I made this little ransom note out of water towers to encourage you to subscribe. You can join my Patreon this month. I ranked some of these water towers and you'll find out how this Petroid ranked. There's plenty more videos I think you'd like, like this one here. But most of all, thank you for learning about water towers with me. Okay, bye.